folks, and we alive yet, or we awake yet. For those of us on the Pacific Coast, it's 4.15 in the morning, and we're slowly getting adjusted to the time change. Weaver, John C., Rosemont, California, what's going on, guys? Um, keeping track of what the hell is going on with the news these days. I'm seeing how things are being changed from left to right, how people are rioting left to right because either they want the status quo or they don't want the status quo. Well, people have a right to demonstrate. They have a right to yell at the government officials how things are. I mean, they have the right to do that. The First Amendment guarantees them to do that. We have voting centers left and right that are they're being inundated. Outside, they're getting protests left and right. Some of the people are saying stop the vote. The other people are saying continue on with the vote. I've got Trump supporters saying stop the vote. And others are saying continue with the damn vote. Can't make up their minds for things. Democracy for you. They have the right to express themselves. They have a right to be idiots if they want to. And then again, when they start going on social media, start attacking everybody, and then start attacking the social media platform that they're on, I'm like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're going to be attacking uh, Facebook at this point over here. You're accusing it to be too damn media, uh, too damn liberal, actually. You're going to be telling them that Facebook is not up what you think it should be. Well, Facebook's always listening for new critiques. The problem is you expect it to be like the federal government. And these idiots keep forgetting that the damn company is a company. It's not a government. And because of rulings for the past 30 or 40 years, <coughs> Different court cases have come up through the federal and state courts regarding how companies are supposed to be treated. I went to the SCOTUS a few times, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know specific laws, but it's just there was a lot of uh, court cases going through that made differences. I'm not a legal scholar. I'm not a court clerk. I deal with memory. I deal with experiences at this point over here, what I've seen, what I've heard, and what I've experienced growing up. And drives me crazy is people don't even bother to study their damn history before opening up their big damn mouth. They're going to make an argument and make sure they got facts in their side. No, they don't. And I'll even make personal attacks saying, why don't you stay back home in your mommy's basement? I can do a better insult than that, you schmuck. I used to laugh at things like that, and I go after them, saying, well, uh, what do you expect from a toddler brain? The thing is, they know what buttons to push at this point over here because they've probably been doing it on any, every other person, so therefore they think they've got the higher moral ground. And basically what we're dealing with is ego and vanity. Yeah, me too. I'm subject to the damn button pushing myself. I can push their buttons, but also I can have my buttons pushed. That's what happens. I'm still monitoring what's happening with the elections getting tighter and tighter. Slightly on the edge regarding Trump losing, Biden trying to win. If a few states actually do flip over to blue, then we've got a contagious match. We've got a winner somehow. And everything hinges on Pennsylvania and it's still not done yet. Biden's got a hell of a lead. Was well, it 253 to 215? There's like five states in, in battle right now. <coughs> One of them reportedly flipped to a Biden state. I believe it was Georgia that someone was reporting. So that gives more power right there as soon as they get that ironed out. They're still counting in the Pennsylvania 
Pennsylvanians get the largest electoral votes. If somebody wins it, they get the marbles. This is Political Science 101. This is why people take courses in high school and in college to understand how the system works. This is why certain key battleground states are being fought over left and right. <coughs> if people understood the history of our country, how it was being fought over, even in politics, how certain states can be flipped, despite the fact you may have a, a spurt here or a spurt there of protesting going on, saying that, no, 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 we're this, we're this. Well, you're a minority, it's a minority, aren't you? Because if the majority is saying otherwise, then all you're doing is just being the minority. It's the majority rules at this point over here. And what people are afraid about democracy, and sometimes it looks like it, it's mob rule. Then if that's the case, then why do we have a bicameral house set up in the federal government? They call it the uh, cup and saucer. In the Madison Papers, the Federalist, Federalist Papers we've got, we're talking about that. Hamilton was a hell of a writer. And I'll tell you, those Federalist Papers are written by the creators of the Declaration of Independence and people of Congress who had to voice their opinions without their names being publicized. They wanted to make sure that the message was out there and not just getting their names out there. And we discover down through history of who wrote those papers. Those papers are instrumental in understanding how our political system works. It's public knowledge out there. It's been public knowledge for decades, centuries, since colonies were started. Actually, when the colonies were being formed into the country, and we have our elected officials back then giving us their pearl of wisdom. A lot of material to go through, especially in that political science class. Especially when you're taking beginning government and you're trying to understand how how procedures work, why they work, and why the government was set up the way it was. It was not to give one person ultimate power. It was not to give one branch ultimate power. It was not to give a religious sect power. It was to split the power up equally into three branches. You have your executive branch, which is the law enforcement. You have the Supreme Court, which is the interpretive of law. And sometimes they can make law. There's something called judicial review. All this is covered under political science law. But they have the same level of importance, Congress, split up into two chamber chunks, the cup and saucer. And they call it the cup and saucer because if you have hot liquid in a cup, the cup is hot. But you need something to cool it down a little bit, which is a saucer. And know how the short, contentious lifespan of a congressman versus a senator is. Congress is the heated passions. Senators are long term. Sometimes they flip flop. Depending on who gets in office and who's getting in charge of the party. And it's becoming more and more crazy these days. You can have Democratic Party and the Republican Party. And they can control 
both houses or just one entire house. 2016, for the first two years, we had a Republican-controlled House and Senate, and we had a Republican-controlled executive branch. Congress makes the laws because they also control the purse. House of Representatives controls the purse because they're controlling all the financing, but they also make the laws. But both sides need each other to balance each other out. There always have to be checks and balances in the system. And that includes, when you're dealing with the executive branch, wanting more and more power than what is allowed by the U.S. Constitution. The Constitution gives the President broad powers but to a point. Because at that time, we were still dealing with foreign entities, which we still are these days, that are interfering with our elections. One way or another. And we didn't want that. Sleep in the eyes of that new guys here. We have had problems with foreign governments trying to interfere with us, and for us to be influenced by it, we've made laws against it. We didn't want the individual states to act on behalf of the United States. We wanted the federal government to act in front of our country so they could deal with the foreign entities directly. The Articles of the Confederation, when they were started right after the Revolutionary War, or actually nearly the end of the Revolutionary War, they were getting the ideas formula, uh, formulated and just passing out from state to state and splitting over here. They wanted a government system that worked so they could pre present it to the world. But it wasn't working because they had most of the power for the states and not for the federal government. And when you had private land orders, and not to mention the government, taking money and lands from the people who actually fought for the country to be formed. There was rebellion. Shea's Rebellion. Federal places were being raided and hijacked. You had campers. States are saying, we need more power. We don't have the power to deal with this. But this is federal. This is well beyond us. We need help. And the federal government is going, we're screwed. Because we haven't got the power for it. Because you didn't give us the power about it in the Articles of Confederation. Meanwhile, the lands are getting confiscated left and right. And money is being squeezed out of everybody. This country is so damn broke. Squeezing blood out of a turnip. How about that one? And during that time, they had to come up with a constitution, a patchwork document we still have these days, with an amendment process to make a hell of a lot of changes on it when necessary. It just had to work. It's a great compromise, they call it. A lot of things are lousy originally when they had it printed and barely accepted by all the colonies, but it was still accepted, drafted in, and we have a stronger federal government now. People over the decades got too damn fearful over the government being more and more powerful than states. And I love it when people screw this up in their heads. When they go after one particular party, and they keep forgetting that the party is no longer the same when it changed a couple of dec uh, a couple of centuries afterwards. When the country was started, you have your Southern Democrats. Keep this in mind, Southern Democrats. And they had the Northern Republicans. Northern Republicans were acting like the Democrats of today. And the Southern Democrats were acting like the Republicans of today. Very conservative they were. 
During the Civil War, the Whig Party was being formed. Basis for the GOP. <laughs> Trying to get through all the history is time consuming. However, if people look at Wikipedia and say, oh, no, it's not. Sometimes Wikipedia can get the information kind of wrong. You know, you have to consult with ancient texts and books. My God, studying like that will scare the hell out of people because they're encouraged to read. And they don't like to read. They're idiots. Every time somebody keeps complaining about history or saying something stupid about history to political system. It reminds me that they never bothered to study in school or learn about it. But after the Civil War, after our country split apart because of changes we didn't like and things we didn't like about ourselves, we didn't like slavery, but we had slavery. We didn't like to have a strong federal government, yet we have a strong federal government. We didn't like for the northern people to tell the southern people what to do, what to say, and what to think. And that's what the misconceptions are of those days. And they kept blaming the Democrats because the Democrats were always in the north. These poor dumbass fools keep forgetting. The Democrats back then were the conservative southerners. So... It always surprised me, what was the change that happened in the start of the 19th century? Actually, in the 1900s, I should say. <clears throat> because the Republicans in the past had been the dynamos of the democracy. They're liberals. They love to build and build and build, forge empires of sorts, have liberal programs out there for people to be involved with. They wanted a hell of a lot of jobs for people. They were pushing our country further and further. The only problem is, sometimes the directions we were getting pushed into wasn't exactly the right choices. We had something called Manifest Destiny inherited by our European ancestors. Manifest destiny being that God appointed us as guardians and conquerors of the universe, basically. So we had to go out there and conquer. We had to show people that we were right and you were wrong. We were fools and idiots. Looking how today is, I'm not surprised. I am not surprised. Because how we're treating each other right now, how we're splitting each other apart left and right, and how we're blaming each other and claiming that the other side is more dumber than we are. It just never ceases to amaze me how low we've sunk as a country, as a people, as ourselves. It's not book knowledge that makes a person. It's usually character counts. And when they have that kind of a low self-esteem they want to push on everybody else, it only tells me what kind of a low self-esteem they've already got going on in the system there. I mean, does a quote-unquote decent human being do this to another person? I don't know. Have we met any decent people these days? Do we know of any decent people these days? You go on social media and you're all, and what you're seeing right now is all the damn keyboard warriors going. <laughs> oh, we don't like social media. They doesn't like it. They're like social. They're like liberals. Lib 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 liberals. They're libtards. We don't like the social media. Well, my question is, why the hell are you on here in the first place? Mouth it off. You don't like it? Get the hell out of here. Isn't that what you guys keep telling other people all the damn time? And what you folks keep forgetting about. Facebook, and the other social media platforms. They're companies. They are not the government. You're not protected by the First Amendment with these assholes. 
And I'll say it again, assholes. They give us the time they can be assholes. You treat them like assholes, they'll treat you like assholes. And guess what? You guys are all assholes. Does that help your situation now? Toddler brains? Please. Every time I keep seeing people going after each other and yelling and screaming at each other that they're all assholes and everything else, I like to see someone in the line saying, Yes, I am an asshole. Yes, I am what you say. And you know what? I own it. You know what Sarah Pablo looked at like? Say he admits it! Yeah, I admit it. Now what's your major excuse? I'm not an asshole. Well, you are an asshole. No, I'm not! You get out of my country! Uh, excuse me. Is your name on the lease? Does it say in the Constitution this is your country? Last time I checked, this said the United States of America. In what part of the Constitution or Declaration of Independence? In what form of uh, political document here gives you ownership over this? People hate it when, th when logic is thrown in their faces because they get pissed off about it. It can't come up with a good comeback. It pisses me off a little bit because I'm seeing how unintelligent, unintelligent these people, these keyboard warriors are. I call them people. Shit. Textual images, trying to push buttons left and right. So I can push your button back. I don't have to insult them with vulgar terminology. I just insult them by their lack of intelligence. But here's the thing. Even with that, there is still arrogance and vanity and ego at work. They're all intertwined, so you know, you're not quite sure what you're dealing with here. I admit to it all. I admit to it all. I may be what they consider a libtard. I may be considered an immature person. I am 53 years old, so talk to me. What's mature these days? Oh, when you're old, red, and senile? Oh, let's see. Well, sometimes the brain reverts to previous lives. They revert back to the simpler times when things were a hell of a lot simpler because the brain is shrinking and trying to save itself. No, I've seen it in a heard it happen too many damn times. You see, I'm not an expert in anything. I'm a learned scholar. I'm a learned student. I study, I read, I lived. There was no mom's basement. People like these dumbass assumptions over here, they don't even know they're asking for hot rock. If you're gonna make a debate with me this morning, Make sure you got your damn facts straight. You gotta come at me with personal information saying, you know, you're this and you're that, and you're this and you're that. You know what? I'm like, fuck you. Your toddler brain. Yes, my ego, my vanity, my arrogance demand to do a response like that. Only well, because I know that you can't command a keyboard very efficiently. And yes, that is another slap to the face. See, so if you guys are going to be start commenting about what kind of an idiot I am these days, look at yourself in the mirror. If you're going to be coming on people like me, who are smart ass like crazy, who think they know better, understand this. You're identifying with every characteristic of that particular person. I do, all the time. All the time. Sucks, but you know, it's there. I can be just as arrogant, egotistical, vain, and different like everybody else. I could throw the dark side at them. It's easy enough to push their buttons. 
You just have to read their comments to see where their intelligence level is. And the thing of it is, without understanding compassion, without understanding empathy, forgiveness, and, and also on how to be uh, a decent human being to people, without understanding humility and humbleness, <coughs> basically you're just like one of those keyboard warriors who doesn't care about what he puts on there. He needs to feed his own ego. I know I keep raising my hand on this damn situation because I need to keep le learning the lessons of humility and humbleness. Which means even I need to be humiliated at the great times. But there's only so much humility I can only take and so much humbleness I can, produ I can produce at this point over here without saying enough's enough. Want to go to toe? Let's go to toe. Now, there are lines crossed. And the thing people don't understand about social media these days, they have lines crossed. And people cross them all the damn time. I've done it too many damn times myself. It's still on there because... I tiptoe a little bit, but I don't fully go across the thing and drive people crazy. I've done videos about this one regarding social media, how it's being treated, how people treat social media, what social media is. And if I have to do another reminder video after this one, I'll do another reminder video. Keep this in mind. Every time you keep putting your characters on the screen, somebody else is reading the damn thing. Be very careful what you write and what you type and what you post. These things will come back to haunt your ass down the road. Either earlier or later on in life. And it's embarrassing as hell because it catches you off guard. It's supposed to catch you off guard. You see the idiot that did it in the first place. My two cents on this video. What's yours?